What's up, guys? Ryan Rigg, late 2012 versus late 2013 MacBook Pro Retina Display Showdown. What we got here is the late 2012 with the Core i7 third generation processor. This is going to have the 8 gig RAM, the GT650M. What we have this running against is actually the MacBook Pro 2013 model, which has 16 gig RAM, the upgraded GT750M, and that new fourth gen Intel processor. We've got 256 gig hard drive in the 2012, and we have a 512 gig hard drive in the 2013 MacBook Pro Retina display. Both these are the 15.4 inch. One's boasting 8 gig of RAM, which is in the 2012 model, and our 2013 model has got the 16 gig of RAM. So both of these are almost identical machines, except for the RAM and obviously the newer processor. We got the GT650M comes in the 2012, whereas the GT750M comes in the 2013, and they've doubled the video memory so you get 2 gig now and this is the upgraded model previous generation had that SATA connection for your hard drive whereas the new 2013 takes advantage of that new PCIe based flash storage so you're going to get extreme hard drive speed you're going to have two brand new Thunderbolt 2 ports on that 2013 versus the 2012 is going to still have Thunderbolt just Thunderbolt 1 you're also going to have just the ABGN wireless in the 2012 but the 2013 has got that brand new 802.11 AC and we'll show you, you can see there's some higher connection speeds and we'll show you that too on the airport utility. Still overall the same theme, same concept, that solid unibody, unibody structure there. I've always enjoyed my 2012 MacBook Pro, used it for almost a year. I've uh, been using the 2013 for a while now too. Still a gorgeous machine, both of them, uh, but you know, having the 2013 with the 4th Gen Intel definitely provides you know a little bit higher level performance. Still have a memory card or HDMI port, as well as USB, and that's USB 3.0. You can see there on our 2012, we're only able to get you know 450 meg per second, whereas you can see now clearly taking advantage of 802.11 AC all the way up to 1300 meg per second. So incredible performance now with the wireless. Still a great looking machine. You've got those amazing engineering with the way air is recycled through the back and brought in through the fans on the top. It's quite an amazing machine, both, you know, compared out well. But let's get into some actual benchmarks here. You can see the disk speed test on the left for the 2012 model versus, the, you know, disk speed we'll got showing here for the 2013. That takes advantage of that PCI eBay's flash storage. As you can see there, the performance with that is going to be actually a lot higher than is your 2012 model because that was that old SATA-based hard drive. So... Definitely the two side by side, you can see which one stacks up, which one's going to provide performance, and that helps out with things like editing and Final Cut Pro, which is what we're doing. Uh, we do a lot of editing. You know, the next test we ran was Cinebench. Uh, using the OpenGL, we were able to get about 30.58 frames per second on the MacBook Pro 2012, and that's the 15.4 inch. And then we ran also that same OpenGL test, but on the 2013, and we we're actually able to get 42.34. That actually has that GT750M and 2 gig video, so that's going to provide you a higher performance with your video and GPU rendering. Next, moving on was Cinebench. We wanted to actually just test out the CPU. The 2012 came in at 6.05 points, and you can see how it's stacked up against others there. And then moving over to the 2013, actually not much change, but up at 6.15 points, and you can see how it ranked up there. Just a couple shades behind the Xeon processor. So these are the 4th gen Intel i7. Flipping over to Geekbench 3, you can see there are 2734 and 10447 for the 2012, but for the 2013 we jump up to 3120 on the single core and 11,962 on the multi-core. So definitely taking full advantage of that 4th gen Intel 2.3, you know, turbo boost up to 3.5. Overall, both machines are exceptional. This is where in my personal opinion and professional opinion where it's going to really come into play we're using final cut pro we took about a 279 meg file and we just let it render into h264 took about a minute 20 on the 2012 model we took that same file like we said it was 269 meg loaded into final cut just uh, export master file to h264 just so we could give you know a valid comparison side to side of the gpus same everything, same file, like we said, render that out into H.264. What was actually amazing here is we shaved 20 seconds off that time. So you can see the performance there is now packed into the brand new 2013 MacBook Pro Retina display. I think with the 4th Gen Intel 802.11ac Thunderbolt 2, uh, the 512 gig PCIe based flash storage you can see was incredibly faster. The faster data rate with wireless and transferring to time capsule was a lot quicker as well, bringing files there and back. 
still boasts that amazing air ventilation. But yeah, I would highly recommend if you're kind of been on the fence about the late 2012, go ahead and make the upgrade. Grab yourself the maxed out 2013-2014 MacBook Pro Retina Display 15.4 inch. My name is Ryan Rigg, the host of your show, and this has been a nice little comparison review. If you guys, like I said, have been on the fence about upgrading, you can see some of the results there. It might be worthwhile to go ahead and upgrade. Maybe put your old one on eBay or sell it to a friend or family member. But nonetheless, the performance with the new 4th Gen Intel, the higher performance in the GPU, because we have that 750M with 2 gig video versus the 1 gig video GT650M, so... What are your guys' thoughts? If we could, please give us a thumbs up. As always, Ryan Rigg, the host of your show, Fast, Electronic, and Loud, because we bring it to you fast, electronic, and, of course, loud. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next episode.